Hi, my name is Josepha Hayden. Uh, normally I start these presentations by saying, you all know me from here, here, and here. Uh, and that's not the case today. I think I know one of you. So, yay, you guys get to meet me for the first time. Uh, let's start first by saying it, I'm so excited that this is uh, an airline theme because I have a rocket ship theme, as though I planned it. So today we're going to talk about SEO. How many of you already know about SEO or do it on your own websites? So know about it. Do it on your own websites. All right. Uh, who's been doing it for the last four years? The last three years? Two? One? All right. Anyone has never done this before and are really nervous about what I'm about to say to you? Yay! Okay, that's good. So don't be nervous. We have a lot of beginning stuff to go through, so you won't feel like um, you're missing anything. So I'm coming to you with many hats today. I am with Hayden Interactive, and that's actually where I learned how to do all of this. Um, this is part of a 12-week series, but this is specifically the SEO introduction section and the Google Analytics section. So I'll take you through the really basics of SEO um, and what you're meant to do with it. And then we'll take a look at three reports inside Google Analytics that can help you to make what I've just told you about SEO actionable. Who has Google Analytics? Yeah, any analytics at all? Anyone other than Google? Cool. So we're not going to go through any. There are a lot of others. They're uh, Clicky, Lucky Orange. Why Analytics, Omniture, things like that. But we're focusing specifically on Google Analytics. It's free, and it's the easiest one to use. Uh, so I've been doing this since 2008. Uh, SEO, copywriting, analytics, paid search, link building, all of it. I've done it, and I love it all. Uh, but I also work with uh, women in technology in Kansas City, trying to get more young women to join the technology uh, and science fields. Uh, I also work at MMGY Global where I, as um, Jasmine said, do their analytics and I do some SEO for them. So I do a lot of strategy. If you have questions, I encourage you to either raise your hand or tweet at me. I am at Josepha Hayden. <laughs> I will answer your questions if you're raising your hands. I will answer your questions if you're tweeting them at me. So let's first start with search engine optimization. Um, this is the direct... Um, the the uh, definition that comes right out of Merriam-Webster is computing the process of adjusting the content, structure, etc. of a website so that it can be, will be displayed prominently by a search engine. Um, so the purpose of SEO is to get your website better viewed in search engines. Uh, and it's not like it used to be. For anybody who's doing primarily self-taught SEO and who has not been trying to um, do this for many, many years, you will maybe not be surprised by the things I have to say, uh, but you might be surprised at the history of what we're talking about. So first I wanted to talk about how search engines operate. Um, there's a bit of a misunderstanding about what happens with search engines. People feel like you type in your search queries into google.com and then Google goes out and searches the entire internet and brings back to you something, right? That's, that's how people kind of feel this works. Um, so let's first talk about how it really happens. There are really three main steps. Uh, the first step is indexing and ranking. So what happens is a, a Google bot, everyone is aware of a Google bot? Yahoo's bot is named Slurp, in case you didn't know that. Um, so they go crawl through sites, index them, and then they keep a record of what is on the site and how it's connected to other things on the site and how it's connected to other things on the internet. Once it has done that, it runs all of that information through an extremely complex algorithm uh, and some additional contextual information to determine the level of quality that your site has. So it searches all of the internet and figures out how everything is connected. Then it logs how it's all connected based on what's in an algorithm that it's laid out. Now the reason that search engines have to use algorithms is to help it make a decision. When humans make decisions, we use heuristics. And so, for instance, I'm trying to figure out whether I should carry my umbrella today. And so I think to myself, um, is it raining? And if the answer is yes, then I say, okay, do I have any presentations to make today? And if the answer is no, maybe I won't take my umbrella. Or maybe I'm not seeing anybody that I care sees me like a little drowned rat. Or maybe I don't look bad as a drowned rat. And so that all goes into my decision-making process. 
But computers can't do that, and so they have this algorithm that's about, you know, 150 steps long that says, is it raining? Should I take my umbrella? Yes. Is it raining? Should I take my umbrella? No. I mean, um, yeah. So that's basically what's happening with a search engine. Uh, heuristics, us, algorithms, computers. And they have to do that so that they can give us the best information when we're searching for it. Oh, look, there it is, search algorithm. Moment of search. Uh, so the moment of search happens completely independent of the indexing process. When a computer, when a site has been indexed, what happens is it is assigned a page rank. Google or Yahoo or any search engine that you're working with, Bing is the other one, um, will take a look at all of, of the things happening on your site, all of the words that are on your site, all the pictures that it can kind of see on your site, and assign it a page rank. Now, a page rank is not the same thing as where you are landing in a search engine result page. Page rank is literally a number that says the quality score of your website is a five. The quality, web, uh, quality score of your website is a one. And so once someone has typed in something in Google.com, say, for instance, I'm looking for um, a, a holiday rental in Paris. I'll type in holiday rental in Paris. And how many of you remember card catalogs? I'm getting some nods and people saying, I'm not raising my hand for that. <laughs> I remember it, but you're going to date my, date my age. Um, so what happens is then those little, those little algorithms that we talked about, those 100-step, 150-step algorithms that we talked about, looks at all of the pages and how they're ranked and how they're connected based on the inter information that you've put in and finds the best one for you. It basically goes and looks at the internet like it's a card catalog. So that's why SEO is important. I was in a presentation recently um, where, uh, well, a panel really, where I was told SEO is kind of a bunch of trickery. And so I was sure <laughs> that they just didn't quite know how search engines work. A lot of people think you type in a search and it goes out and finds things, but really the things have already been found and it just goes through its own little card catalog and tells you what is best. So this is the anatomy of the search interface. I'm sure you are all aware of this. This is as basic as it comes. We have holiday rentals in Barcelona, some paid search up there in the top, um, some paid search over here on the right, a map, and then way down here, just at the bottom of it, you can see where all of your organic search results are starting. Um, there was a change made yesterday <laughs> to, <laughs> to um, the way that Google is doing this so that they're pushing our organic search results even further, and now it's 100% below the fold. They're offering up detailed articles in the top of, of their search results as well. So, um, changing landscape. And before even that change that they made yesterday, uh, you have to remember that nobody sees the same thing on any of any of the searches that they perform. Some people have social search engaged, and some people don't. Some people have safe search engaged, and some people don't. Although. I'm sure that all of yours will pass the safe search uh, filter. Um, but some people will have a lot of, of uh, tailoring that's been done. As they click through links on a search result page, Google gets smarter and remembers those things and changes them so that they can offer you better choices in the future. So what we're doing with SEO is not trying to trick Google, and we're not trying to trick Bing. We hear that a lot. We hear people saying, well, can't I just pay Google and make them have me the top of organic search all the time? And you just can't, uh, because now the options are so customizable that really our whole job with SEO on our websites, search engine optimization on our websites, is to make it clear that we know what we're talking about, clear that we are a high quality purveyor of whatever good that we are providing, and that it's clear to search engines. That's really all we're trying to do. Mm. Which brings us to our SEO-related elements. First. There we go. Okay. So, um, the first thing. Let's get it up and running here. There we go. You got, this is not showing the yellow part. There's all these yellow things in there, and I didn't actually realize it wasn't going to show the yellow. But there are some things in there you can't see. It's a dotted line and some scissors. It's okay. 
so the first thing that's in there is the content. Uh, website, content, keywords, and SEO coding. Keywords are part of the content. Content is all the words, all the pictures that you have on your site. It's important to remember, as far as your pictures go, that websites can't see those. And so you have to have your alt text and your metadata correctly added. Do we all know what, co what those are, metadata, alt text? No, OK. So alt text is, um, is a field in your HTML that is associated with any visual. So you can associate it kind of with Flash, not so much anymore, um, but definitely with your photos. So if you have a photo of Josepha standing giving a presentation, you have to put into your alt tag, this is Josepha giving a presentation at KC Chamber for Small Business. Or search engines will just see, that's an image. That's a big image over there. So you have to have those things in there because search engines just can't, they don't have eyes, they can't see anything that we don't tell them is there. Uh, metadata, did you guys say you know what meta tags are? No, no meta tag people? Okay. So there are a few pieces of metadata that are really important. Title tags, I know that everybody will have heard about title tags. That's what happens at the top of your website where those three dots are, that's technically navigation. But right above it, that's where your title tag is. And that is what gets pulled through in your search engine result page. The link that they click, that's actually your title tag. So it's the first thing that people see. So your title tag, tag is extremely important. The metadata and the meta description, not metadata, the meta description, that's where the description in your search engine result page is pulled from. So you have, I don't know, about 75 characters in your title tag, but people really only pay any attention to the first 30, 35. Uh, and then your description, search engines no longer use that as an identifier of how quality you are or where you need to be in the search, but people, that's what they're seeing when they're looking at that. If you remember to put your keywords in it, those keywords get highlighted when it comes up in a search engine result page. So if I've typed in holiday rentals in Barcelona and the meta description is, we provide high quality holiday rentals in Barcelona, it will highlight holiday rentals and Barcelona. All make sense? I see some nods. If at any point I'm going too fast, I encourage you all to stop me. For one, because if I am going too fast, I can absolutely slow down. And for two, because if you don't tell me, I'll never know. So the next thing that is involved uh, is the development portion. Do we have any developers in here? Or, yes, ish? Do we have anyone who ever has to talk to a developer about their website? Yeah, a few people? Um, this will help you immensely, I'm sure, slash make them very upset. My developers always get really upset when they're like, no, I don't want to put that in there. But information, your information architecture, which specifically is talking about the URL structure. So take, for instance, HaydenInteractive.com. If we have, we have like 1,500 blog posts because we've been around since 2008, and we basically do one every day. So we have a lot. Uh, but if we were to put on every single blog post, HaydenInteractive.com slash blog slash BID equals 218. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to search engines, and they really are paying attention to what your URL says. If instead what I have is Hayden Interactive slash blog slash SEO Launchpad, and someone comes and searches for Hayden Interactive SEO Launchpad series, they're going to instantly find that because it's in my URL, it's in my title tags, it's in my meta description. So very important things, good URL structure, that is static, not dynamic, in case anyone wants to write that one down. Uh, and then standards compliant code, which is definitely for developers, so standards compliant code, my one developer in the room. Um, along with that, it's important to remember that you have to have lean code and a really good code to content ratio. If you have, like, uh, say, three or four times the amount of code as you have content on your site, that will absolutely count against you. So you want to make your code clean and as efficient as possible. And then text links, earned, requested, and social. Uh, so uh, anyone in here do paid search? No? OK. Anyone in here do social media? I know you, do, you guys just had a presentation about it. So we have a smattering. OK. Um, link building. Anyone do link building? Yes, I have a, I have a hand, two hands. Uh, so the difference between earned, requested, and social, earned links will be link building links, basically. You've gone out and said, 
For instance, I have, um, I have a lab site called myfreshplans.com. It's for teachers. And so I can go to uark.edu and say, hey, I think that this resource would be really good for your, for your education program. And then they, if they agree, they say, great, I'll put it in our resources uh, page on our website. And then I have an earned link from a .edu site. .edu and .gov sites, by the way, extremely good for link building if you can convince anyone to give you one. Uh, .net.com, good, but not, but not so great. But definitely .edu uh, and .gov are the well sought after links that people have. Um, requested, hmm. requested is kind of link building. Uh, that was an example of a requested link building. Link building that happens organically is like if you just say, well, that girl was really good at what she just did. I'm going to put HaydenInteractive.com on my blog. I don't even know if you have a blog, but in case you did. Um, that is technically an earned one. I didn't ask for it. He has decided that I was good enough to have a link on his blog. That's earned. Requested is when I ask for one. Uh, social media, those are not technically considered link building, and they're not technically considered part of the whole link building process that gives you referral traffic. Um, but it does count more now than it used to because we have social search that people have in Google Analytics. We have so social search starting in Bing and starting in Yahoo. If you ask me, I think Yahoo's going to win in the social, social, social search race just because they have a brand new look at it. And so they can see what everyone else did wrong already. Uh, let's see. Let's see anything else. So do we have any questions about that so far? Oh, look, we got some orange stuff coming up. All of these things, content, keywords, SEO, coding, information architecture, all of this goes into SEO on your site. Yes, ma'am. So the question is about reciprocal linking. If I, what is your site's name? Uh, KiwiCreativeKC.com. And I say, hey, Kiwi Creative, I'll give you a link from myfreshplans.com if you give me a link back. That's what she's talking about when she means reciprocal links. It's not that they cancel each other out. They still have a little bit. Link builders, by the way, get the cutest jargon. It still has a little bit of link juice. That is the actual thing we call it. <laughs> it still gets a little bit of link juice, but not as much as if you just gave me a link. So it's still valuable. Yes. Still valuable, but not as valuable as a one-way link. Um, also, you have to be aware that there are no follow attributes that you can give to links. So originally when no follow came about, you could say to a robot, I'm going to link to this person, but not because it's a vote of confidence for their website. It's because they did something really, really bad. And I want to talk about them and send people there, but not actually say that I believe in what they're doing. Uh, and so a no follow tag on a link, all that meant was robots, please don't count that. That's all it meant. Related, but not quite. If you are doing reciprocal linking, that's why, that's why I told you about it. If you are doing reciprocal linking, you do have to check and make sure that they didn't give you a no follow because then you get nothing for it and they get all of that and it looks like a one-way link. Yep. All right, so next thing that we're gonna do. So does everybody have um, a really basic understanding of SEO? Anyone who didn't have any SEO information, you feel like you're ready to talk about my reports, my SEO reports? I see no motion, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to pretend it's a yes. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through a few Google Analytics reports. Um, at the end of this, at the end of the presentation, there is a URL on the final slide which will have access to um, three presentations, two about Google Analytics, one that goes very much in depth on SEO. So you'll have access to those there, but you'll also have access to, I think I have five custom reports and dashboards that will help you to take the SEO overview that we just did and help you take the three reports that we're about to look at and make them actionable basically right away. So do take notes as we're going through this, but don't feel like you have to take so many notes that you lose things because you'll have access to it later, okay? So this is the Google Analytics homepage basically. In that orange bar at the top, you can see that the little house on the left is selected and it will show all of the properties, all of the accounts that you have. Um, in this case, we've got 
a couple of KC people and then a number of non-KC people. The next thing that you have are your accounts. Those are the things that show up in these little open folders. Uh, they're always showing in gray at the moment. GA is constantly updating and optimizing what they're doing. And so any day now, that could change. Uh, but the furthest out, is, uh, those are referred to as accounts. I'm just going to take this little guy. The next one in is referred to as properties. And so under a single account, you can have up to 25 properties. I recommend keeping a one-to-one -one correlation between your accounts and profiles. So if I have uh, josephahayden.com and I have one website for a desktop, josephahayden.com, and I have one mobile site, for that I would do josephahayden.com and m.josephahayden.com under one account because those are technically one, one set of properties. Does that make sense? So I wouldn't want to put josephahayden.com as my account and then have josephahayden.com, m.josephahayden.com, and fresh plans or something. This is particularly an issue if you ever need to give your, your account information to anybody. So I don't know if any of you are doing that sort of thing with your, with your analytics. But if you are, then do it that way. Uh, and then the last, well, second to last level out here are the profiles. And in there, I recommend that you have one profile that has a bunch of information not in it. And by a bunch of information, I mean you don't want to have any IP addresses for your own office. You don't want to have any IP addresses for anyone who works on your website for you. And we refer to that as the market filter. So you take out anyone who's working on your website. I do go into depth in it in one of the presentations that is on the URL that I told you about earlier. Thank <laughs> you.